And there's an old saying that comes to mind when going through some of these old lyrics um, and some of the messaging that Drake was spitting from the very beginning. When someone tells you who they are, believe them. Believe them. All right, all right, let's get into it now. Going through um, a lot of the old Drake songs, and of course the Timestamp songs or the Timestamp series is probably his most popular. Um, the very first one, 9 a.m. in Dallas, has some lyrics in it. Now, Drake is only 23 years old at the time, okay? So this is 14 years ago. Uh, he was young, but at the same time, I think in some of these lyrics, he kind of told on himself and who he remains to be, or at least some of the behavior that kind of remains the same and speaks to the accusations of Kendrick Lamar that Drake hasn't grown up as much as he should have, right? Has matured as much as he should have. So let's get into it. Some of the 9 a.m. in Dallas lyrics that are a little problematic as time has gone on. Now. The start of the song is problematic as Drake raps. These are my one St. Thomas flows, me, my niggas, and some Madonna hoes that look just like virgins, but they down to go. Discussing life and all our common goals. Smart kids that smoke weed on a roll. Now, clever wordplay there. Um, nice lyrics, but the look like virgins, but trust they down to go. That aged terribly. Now, this song was released about two months after the incident where he pulled the young girl who was 17 years up on stage in Denver, Colorado, and was a little bit inappropriate with her, to say the least. So anyway, let's continue down the song. Now, he continues with Wheezy, I'm just out here repping us till I get to shake the hand of the man that's blessing us. No, who the hell is that? Uh, yeah, I know these niggas miss the mean lyrics. Kush got the room smelling like teen spirit. I ask kindly if no one out here would bring defeat up until I lose from now. I'm the game single leader. Now, again, good bars, very good wordplay. And here's the thing about the ghostwriting allegations. For some of you Drake haters out there, see, if you say he has ghostwriters, then that means these lyrics don't apply to him or his mindset. Just something to keep in mind there. So, yeah, I know these niggas missed the mean lyrics. Got Kush got the room smelling like team spirit. What does that mean? With the information that we have now, that takes on a different meaning. And I don't mean directly. What I'm saying is to use Kush Got The Room smelling like teen spirit. What, is, what does teen spirit smell like? And why does that come up in your mind as a 23-year-old to rhyme with lyrics, mean lyrics? There's a lot. You can put a lot of other things in there um, that rhyme with lyrics mean lyrics instead of teen spirit again when you couple that with some of the behavior that we now know of um that yeah that just doesn't that again goes to the mindset that kendrick said or accused drake of having it just does but also this next line about uh no one out here bringing defeat up i'm the game single leader right and some of the behavior drake is exhibiting after losing in a battle uh, stopping people's concerts, uh, the trolling online instead of just moving on from the battle, right? He always told us he was going to be a sore loser, period, point blank. And then we continue going to skip a line in the song and he goes, and I book a suite where me and your favorite singer meet up. Who you like, tell me who it is. I'm going to make sure that that woman is the next one on my list. I should call it a night, but F it, I can't resist. This one for all the ninjas from my city trying to diss. Without a response from me, you really fail to exist, and I love to see you fail. That feeling there is the ish. Again, when somebody tells you who they are, you need to believe them. And it, this all speaks to the character he's exhibiting in this battle and in the past, okay? As far as trying to smash other people's females, and as far as being sensitive towards other artists who he's not getting along with. I mean, he's held a grudge against Kendrick Lamar for 11 years. And yes, it was Drake who held the grudge. It wasn't Kendrick. Kendrick was responding to him. 
and his constant overreaction to the control verse. Now, shout out to Kanye West. These next group of lyrics here is going to speak to something he talked about. And then I'll talk about it after I say what the lyrics are. So it goes, considering the fact that I'm the one that they just picked to write a chapter in history, that ish has got me sick. But if I really do it, don't expect to get a split because this is truly some ish I don't expect for y'all to get. Now, the first part of that. I'm the one they picked. And then when you go back to the verse where he says, me and Wheezy till we get to shake the hand of the man that's blessing us. That all speaks to what Kanye said about Drake's relationship with the higher ups at Universal Music. And I have to be honest, it also speaks to a lot of fan theories that Drake from the beginning is some sort of industry plant. Now, I don't hold that uh, same, I'm not in total agreement with that, but as I go through his catalog a little more carefully, as I did with this song, um, it's at some of the evidence is there. I can't really um, act like people don't have a leg to stand on because they do. Even if they just hate Drake, um, this is this is the first time stamp song. And a lot of this is speaking to what we now know 14 years later as Drake's character. And there seems to be some serious flaws that maybe his success is masking for him and that he doesn't think he needs to maybe work on some of this stuff. I mean, if you still like to be in contact with young girls, that's a little bit alarming. If you still don't understand how to do proper business in the music industry as a leader in the culture, quote unquote, that's a problem. And if you wish to continue to engage in battles with other artists, these things are going to be brought up. And I'm sure that Kendrick has six more songs, we believe, right? And I'm sure there's other artists, ASAP Rocky is loading up his record. There's other artists we know who have a problem with Drake who probably already have other records. These are things that they're going to bring up. You know, I hate if I'm spoiling it for y'all. I'm sorry. You know, if y'all got records that's going to bring up these lyrics, my bad. But I had to do a video because I don't like how he's continuing to move, continue to block people's concert. Like, sir, from TDE, I don't remember if he was in the Like Us video, not Like Us video. He probably was in the crowd when they were showing everybody. But at the same time, he's an R&B singer. What does he have to do with this? Okay, Schoolboy Q, I can kind of get that. He's one of Kendrick's closest bandmates. You know, they, they came up together. But Sir doesn't really have anything to do with this other than being on TDE. So is it war with TDE? For what reason? Kendrick's not even on that label anymore. And saying that, well, it's the Toronto's police decision. Nobody believes that. Because here's the thing. You as the artist, Kendrick as the artist, TDE as the artist could assure them, look, we're not here to cause any drama. That thing is over, right? And we need to conduct, everybody needs to conduct their business honestly and openly and end the battle. Just end it. Let it be over. But he's petty with dedication, as he let us know in the heart part six. So, and the internet, the social media trolling on IG doesn't help the situation at all. And you can't sit up here, as some of his fans try, have tried to do and say that, oh, you guys are reaching it's not him. He's not. He wouldn't do that. He's not stopping anybody's concerts. Uh, he's moved on. No, he hasn't. He hasn't moved on. And he's a sore loser. Bottom line. And if he wasn't doing those kind of things, I wouldn't even be making this video. You know, I did the breakdown for this song. There's a full breakdown. But I was going to leave it alone because I'm like, he lost. I, I feel like it's dogpiling. But... The, the stopping people's concert and stopping their money is corny. Okay, especially for artists that are really trying to get started, that are really talented, like Sir in TDE and Schoolboy as well. Uh, even though, you know, it's not going to hurt Schoolboy as much. Still, it's corny to just stop their concert. Like, what are, what are you doing? There's not going to be a problem. Okay, give them a call. Say, hey, dog, if you could, don't play Not Like Us. Especially, I'm sure Schoolboy would not have played the song. He's not on that at all. So, long story short, beta behavior, Drizzy. And you're making it worse if you keep doing this kind of stuff because it just makes you look bad. It makes people like me and others want to keep making videos like this about Drake. It's him. 
it's he's got to just let it go. Just let it go. Again, if they start firing back at you again, then I understand it. But Kendrick hasn't said anything. Nobody's saying anything. Everybody's really trying to move on. Except for Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, who district in a couple of the records that he released on his new album, uh, Bando Stone and the New World. Check out my album review for that. Also check out the uh, lyrics explained for the Drake disc on that album, the song Yoshinoa. Click one of the links to those two videos at the end of this video right here. Thank you for watching as always. Hit that like button, share button, and subscribe button. And we out. Peace.